The ousted CEO of MoviePass explains what went wrong with MoviePass's $10 a month plan. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and yes, we're talking about MoviePass on this channel. For those of you who are aware of my other channel, you might be um, more in tune with what's going on, but I want to move all my app-related topics from that channel onto this channel. This is one of the steps to doing it, and I talked about MoviePass a lot on that other channel, and now I'm going to talk about it here. And it seemed like a very good time to pivot because we've got this interview in which Stacy Spikes, who this guy, he's the one who actually created MoviePass, he breaks his silence on the startup's whirlwind rise and crash to financial reality. And we're going to talk a little bit about his new project, Pre-Show, as well. Now, here's the th we're not going to read this whole interview because, you know, a lot of this is, you know, how did it, you know, get, how did it start, how did you expand, um... But, and all, it's a very good read, to be honest. But, he, it's like, here's where things start getting interesting. Um, around, uh, let's see here, where, where, where is it? Um, so, so here. So, like, here they're talking about 2016. How's the company doing financially? We have 15,000, 20,000 subscribers. Our average life was two years. We had a 3% churn, utilization with about 1.5 to 2. And the math, math with figuring will get profitable a few months down the line because people would calm down in their behavior. But a major change happens at MoviePass. Me and the board decided we've got, we've, we'd get one person to focus on getting capital. And since I built the product, I'd focus on operations. So Mitch Lowe came in. We put him as CEO. I was COO. We look and see that three theaters take up 50% of business and the rest take up the other 50%. Since AMC said no, Regal and Cinemark aren't going to say yes, we decide to go from the bottom up in terms of like, you know, local theaters and stuff. While Mitch was out chasing capital, I spent the time setting up these smaller theaters. Studio Movie Grill signed on. They also invested. We also talked to Alamo Drafthouse, B&B, Landmark, Marcus. The conversations were going good, but it's not a quick process. And then, in the summer of 2017, Helios and Matheson Analytics comes into the picture. When, and they ask, like, you know, when's the first time he heard of them, but here's the thing. Spike says, we had a couple of meetings in New York, and we were introduced to them. Ultimately, the proposal came at $25 million for 51% of the company. And in the proposal, it said they wanted us to temporarily drop the subscription price to $10 to help climb up to 100,000 subscriptions. Then, eventually, the company would go public. None of that was too painful. The $10 were thought of as a promotional thing, in a way celebrating HMNY buying us. But we hit 100,000 in 48 hours. At this point, he laughs. So I'm like, okay, turn it off. We reached our goal. Where things start to divide is myself and a handful of other were method methodical about testing price points. The lowest we ever got down to was $12.99 and as high as $75 where we added IMAX and 3D. We knew what was sustainable, but the overriding voice was, no, this is awesome, look how fast we're growing. And it was this moment of, but $10, it doesn't fly. Now the plane is falling. It's now December and we were growing at a quarter of a million subscriptions a month, and I definitely was not a happy camper and was making that known. So this is, from the founder of MoviePass, Stacy Spikes, the guy who created this little beauty. He had priced this thing like you could get it as low as $12.99 a month, and who knows what options you would have had. It probably would have looked very much like the limited plan we have now, but more functional, and as high as $75, which would include IMAX and 3D. Guys, I would have definitely paid $75 a month if that included IMAX and 3D. And at that point, they could be sustainable. The $10 was supposed to be temporary until they got to 100000 They got it really quickly. Stacy Spike said, let's turn it off. But Ted Farnsworth, the guy who runs companies into the ground, said, no, this is cool. Look at how many subscribers are getting. Well, you're getting that many subscribers because the deal is too good to be true. It's too good to be true. So anyway, here it continues. In that month, the photo of Mitch and Helios and Matheson CEO Ted Farnsworth in front of the AMC in Times Square is released to celebrate the company hitting 1 million subscribers what did you think of that? And Spike says, it's more. 
What was the industry's reaction? I think the industry's reaction was a sense of disappointment. It's a small neighborhood exhibition. These are handshake deals. Some families have owned these companies for generations. That photo changed the relationship in the marketplace. The tone turned it more adversarial. Adver- adversarial, I'm sorry. Up to that point, MoviePass had been the underdog champion for going to the movies. I wasn't part of that decision. Then, on January 9th, I got an email that said, thank you, but your services are no longer needed. And my feeling is we just disagreed on the approach. After that, I've never spoken to Mitch or Ted, and I've been watching it all unfold just like everyone else. So, and he talks more about the brand loyalty they were building up, how people are upset about them. I still get emails from people saying that they're upset. I just got an email from one of my former Patreon supporters who was asking, why isn't Hellboy on the MoviePass app? And he has the subscription that's supposed to be uncapped in the sense that three movies a month and they can be whatever you want. I didn't respond to him, but if he's watching this publicly, the answer is because they don't want to buy the tickets. That's probably the most logical reason. So this is a very fascinating interview, and I definitely think um, Stacy Spikes had an idea of what he wanted to do, and it wasn't him who ruined it. I, I, I'm still giving Mitch a little bit of a pass, although he has definitely shown to be very complicit in a lot of this. I mainly blame this guy. It seems like once Ted Farnsworth came in, they really, really took over. Um, in my opinion, they probably should have tweaked the deal just a little bit. Um, taken $5 million less and sold 49%. So that therefore, Ted could still be overruled. But that didn't happen. And now, Stacy Spikes has this new thing called pre-show. And I don't know why this was all the way down here, but here it is. Here's a Kickstarter campaign. Um, as you can see, people are contributing to it. There's a $10,000 goal. It has 1,139 backers. Um, and this thing kind of scares me. Pre-show allows you to see movies in theaters for free. It's invitation only. Join our private launch here to be invited. Pre-show is created by movie fans for movie fans. Pre-show's members enjoy the cinema first from movies and theaters absolutely free, no blackout periods. It's also invitation only. This is your invitation. So how does this work? How does this work? Well, here's the thing. We send you unique computer-generated code when it's ready after the campaign. You download the pre-show app and insert your code. You answer a few questions. You receive a virtual card like a credit card without the plastic. Your in pre-show is now ready to use. But here's the thing. To use pre-show, select the movie you want to see. A 15 to 20 minute pre pre-show video of branded content will be sent to your device. Watch the pre-show video. Upon completion, your virtual card is credited. Purchase your movie ticket in advance in the same way you normally would. Um, here are some things, important notes. You can choose any 2D film playing in any theater, so no 3D or IMAX. Saturday nights, opening weekend, no problem, no blackout periods. There is no credit check to receive the virtual card. Every adult who's invited is approved. Since the card is virtual, you get the number, but not the plastic. You can't lose it. The card has embedded code. It is only for redeeming of movie tickets. Pre-show is iOS and Android compatible, even during the initial launch at all levels. Your pre-show account is unique to you using your proprietary facial identification software. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> See this image right here? This is how it works. You watch a video and it scans your face while you're watching the um, the video. <laughs> Not creepy at all, but it says right here, privacy is a top concern. Nobody is recorded, no per personally identifiable data is shared. All data is aggregated and anonymized to brand partners. If a member chooses to opt into a brand offering, they'll be connected directly to the brand. A provisional patent has been filed for the technology. You can start and stop the pre-show video whenever you like. The motion detector automatically pauses playback if you have to step away. You can resume watching anytime at your leisure. I mean, boy, that, that, that almost reminds me of like the Clockwork Orange thing where they're just forcing the guy to watch propaganda. Granted, you're getting a movie out of the deal, I guess. So this is closed beta. And, well, there's different tiers. At one point, I think this app will be free and you will get the movie tickets free. This will truly be monetizing on moviegoers data because we know how much the movie tickets will cost and they will charge that plus some extra money for themselves. But boy, is this creepy. I mean, our data privacy has become a bigger and bigger issue and an app like this just scares me. 
I would much rather a movie pass still exist, but the way movie pass and now Cinemia is going along, this might just be the way we have to do it. Either way, I'm very disappointed that he was ousted from his own company. It seems like he had some good ideas. It seemed like he knew what he was doing. And, you know, they just said no. So there you have it. But now the question um, comes along. What do you folks think? Do you um, agree that Stacy would have been a the guy to continue running the company? Do you blame Ted Farnsworth? Do you believe... Do you blame Mitch Lowe? Do you think nothing could have been saved at all? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if you want discounts on gas as they are rising, get the GetUpside app below. You will get discounts on gas. Also, check out the Apptrepreneur Vlogs channel where there is new content being uploaded every week. And check us out on Apptrepreneur Hangouts on Facebook. You have to be approved like pre-show to join, but we will probably approve you and we won't sell your data. And as always, blame responsibly. Have a good one.